Don, thank you so much for joining us. I do have a copy of your book. Don McRobert writes, White Fear, Overcoming the Impossible to Get Ahead. Let's start with that title. Uh, a boy born in Pretoria uh, in what now often is described as a very dark time in South Africa's history. Why this title for your memoir, as it were? There was fear. Fear to go and work in Soweto, number one. I'd never been there before. And secondly, I did not, I wasn't acting very much with people living there. And so I was, it was a fear. But the big thing, the fear came from the police or the security branch or the regulations and the laws. That drove the fear in the end because the people down there became very friendly. They gave me a name called Bra Don or Brother Don. They all called me Bra Don. And so I was very happy there. It was the fear of the authorities eventually. Um, what led you to want to step out of your comfort zone, as it were, and, and go and find out what was really happening in South Africa? What was part of your political and social awakening? Certainly, I was brought up very much against the apartheid regime, but my family were very good to me, Marianne and all the children, and I'm very grateful to them because they never got in the way. And so something said, I must go and do something there. And so when I met Archbishop Tutu, he agreed that we should form a company, a not for company, a not for profit company. And we called it Get Ahead. And our chairman was Dr. Motlana of Soweto, well known. Archbishop Tutu was vice. Also there was Archbishop Abigbon, uh, uh, Advocate uh, Dikang Morsaneke, later become the Deputy Judge as President, Tubbs uh, uh, Matabata, who led the 1976 students. Wonderful people, very good indeed. Now, uh, tell us a bit, you spent quite a bit of time in the book talking about uh, the lead up to starting this foundation. You at first wanted to start a company that had only black shareholders, which of course was unheard of at the time. Uh, what was the advice you were given by people like Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu about the direction you should take to try and empower black South Africans at that time? You're absolutely right. We started off firstly by launching a public company and we invited people to take up shares in that company and they and we tried but the the idea of people from Soweto getting shares in a company was not known and so we really battled to sell and then we met up through Archbishop Tutu and he said he said change direction start away from a public company, start a non-NGO company. And that's what we did. That's when we started Get Ahead Foundation. Now, um, some, of the the people, some of the people you worked with at the time obviously went on to become rather famous South Africans. Um, but you also spent quite a bit of time in the book telling stories about the ordinary South Africans that you uh, interacted with in the work that you were doing at grassroots level. Uh, uh, one that stood out for me was the one of Sophie the Shabin Queen. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about her. The book tells you about the troubles facing so many people wanting to get started. And we started what is known as the uh, group lending uh, system, where people would, where we used to lend money to people in groups, the so-called Stockfells. And we were, we, were bank, uh, we were based on the Grameen Bank of Bangalik, and we copied them with a group lending. And so we started with that. And then we found the women were, were far better. And so we started lending mainly to women in groups. 
and our chairman, I'm, I'm getting back to your question, Dr. Mm -hmm. Montlana used to say, people, you've got to repay your, your loans. There is no free lunch at all. So we started lending money to small people, mainly the women, and they are tough. Mm -hmm. And we started them with starting their own little businesses, some of them in, in Shabin's, some of them in spaza shops, some of them sewing, some of them even welding. They were fantastic. So these women, like you, the person you mentioned, like uh, Sosi Sajani or Mrs. Chalky or Beauty Satori, and they're all in the book. They tell you how they battled. And Sifoni, the, the, the story that you mentioned of Sifoni, uh, 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 Sajani, her problem was that she had to hide her, her bottles of uh, booze away to evade, to evade from the police, to get away from them. And so she used to borrow a French uh, fridge next door, and she used to get her bottles that way. And she was caught and had to go to court and pay a fine. And eventually, she did very well. She bought a car, she paid her education for her children. So Sophie did so well, very well. And there are many stories like that. You also went on to become a founding member of the National Association of Cooperative Societies um, uh, of South Southern Africa. So that's like an umbrella body for burial societies, stockfells, and the like. Uh, it seems that at the core of the work that you've done throughout your lifetime uh, is a belief that there can't really be freedom without economic freedom. What do you make of the progress we've been able to make uh, for the majority of South Africans to try and better their uh, uh, lives? almost 30 years into our democracy? Well, I can't really speak about that now. I have my views now, uh, because at the time we were fighting the uh, apartheid regime. Sadly, with the looting, I decided to go and visit firstly Alex, nearby Santon, and then to Soweto, two days after the looting, and what worries me, it really worries me, is that most of the people that I saw there in the streets, they're all men under 30, and they don't have, in my view, good education. They have 30% parts, no hope of a trade, and definitely no hope of a job. And so, in answer to your question, if I had to do something again now, I'd start again our same Mm -hmm. uh, before I let you go, White Fear is the title of your book, and it's a journey that started when you decided to step out of your comfort zone. Boy, uh, born and grew up in Pretoria and went out into the township, and that's where your journey started. Do you think enough white South Africans do that even still to this day? No. Many South Africans are still very white, very right-wing, and they're not really enough for the people poor, whether it's white or black. And that's the one. They've got lovely houses, game farms, places on the beach. They don't worry about the people down there. And I think, I watch, watch my words, I think we're going to have more problems like this going forward. I hope I'm wrong. Thank you so much for your time. Don McRobert is the name. Uh, many South Africans would obviously know him, but if you don't, you can get his book. It's called White Fear, Overcoming the Impossible to Get Ahead. And that, of course, in reference to the organization uh, that he helped start called the Get Ahead Foundation. Fascinating read there. We thank him for his time this evening.